Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at Nitro Red, the original Nitro, Nitro Pour Ohm, and Nitro Intense. I also have all the other Nitros and I'm doing a series where I'm gonna review the next few batches and then I'm gonna do a ranking video. So I'm gonna compile all my thoughts and put them into one video. I'm also gonna do a giveaway for that video. I'm gonna do two winners and I'm gonna decant all eight of these fragrances and I'm gonna put them in decants and whoever wins, I'm gonna send you all of them. If you're interested in that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It should come out maybe next week, maybe the week after that. I wanna really dial in my thoughts, but we're gonna do an epic video. Right now I'm gonna talk about these three, kind of dial in my thoughts a little bit and give you my opinions of them. I'm not gonna rate them until that video comes out, but let's talk about the original first here. Now the bottle looks really cool. I like this whole leathery kind of thing with this. These bottles look really good. And when they're all paired up all together, they look really cool. I, I really like the way that they look. Now let's talk about the scent on the original one here. This is the Porome version, Nitro Porome. And I have to say, I'm really kind of indifferent about this one. The overarching thing with all of these fragrances that I've noticed is they are super powerful. Super powerful in the opening, almost overbearing to the point where it's like anosmic sometimes. And, but that's just for the first hour, first maybe two hours, but then they dry into this like marvelous mass, like a lot of these dry down so nice. And that's where you're kind of like, you know, experiencing the fragrance mostly is the deep dry down. So anyway, let's talk about the, the original one here. And this one is a very orange blossom heavy fragrance. This one comes across like if 1 million had like the cinnamon removed or like the, the spiciness removed. This one has a lot of like white florals, aromatic. It's almost like that sweet jasmine kind of quality. In the top, you have lemon, mandarin orange, bergamot, grapefruit, nutmeg, and cardamom. And in the mid, you have orange blossom, jasmine, and cedarwood. And in the base, you have musk, cedarwood, tonka bean, sandalwood, and guyac wood. Now, initially, when they were going, when they were sending me these, I was I looked up all of the fragrances online, and I thought that this one was going to be my favorite. But from wearing it, it was a very sickingly sweet in the opening. It did dry down quite nicely, but it's like a one million kind of style without the like the cinnamon or like without a lot of the spiciness. Heavy on the citrus, and it's like a juicy, fresh, um, sweet citrus. Uh, but then you have this nice white floral, heavy dominant in the white floral department. Jasmine is very noticeable in here. And then there's a lot of woody aspects in here as well. And so I'm a little indifferent about this one. It does definitely smell nice, but it's not something that I would gravitate towards. It definitely has a nice airy, light, white floral kind of vibe to it. Um, but it also has this sweetness that is ever present, especially for the first hour to two hours. It definitely lasts for a very long time. All, all these fragrances last for eternity. Um, but this one I'm not sure about. Um, you know, I like it but it's not something that I'm really gravitated towards. Yeah, anyway, white floral dominant, powdery, musky, that kind of thing. All right, let's talk about the intense version. I was kind of pleasantly um, impressed by this one. So right off the bat, I'm gonna say that this one is Creative Ventus. It is Creative Ventus on crack. Um, for the first maybe two hours, this thing was so potent. It was so incredibly po potent. There is definitely a minty kind of acetate in here, which gives it this like cooling menthol kind of effect in here. And it's so overdone in here. It, it you know, for me, it's a nosmic, but I was trying to smell past it. And it definitely has like a nice ripe pineapple. You can almost smell the pineapple rind. It's got this amazing birch and this guyac wood in here. It is super smoky, super intense. And this stuff has such a potency behind it too. I would say that this one and Club de Nuit Intense Man, I bought Club de Nuit Intense Man back in 2016, 17 area. And that stuff was so powerful, so potent. And this reminds me a lot of it. It has this like intense, smoky birch wood kind of smell to it. Nice musky tone in here too. Creed Aventus, the florals and stuff kind of balance everything out. I don't pick up a whole lot of florals in here. They're, they're definitely present, but it doesn't balance everything out like it does in Creed Aventus or you know, other clones of Creed Aventus. But this stuff is so powerful. If you are looking for a 
beast mode longevity beast mode projector this is a must try because this one has such a potency behind it it's pretty clean too i mean it's it, it definitely smells clean but it's it's very smoky it's a smoky dominant birch wood cedar wood sandalwood heavy musk lots of inbroxin nice pineapple vibe in here there's a um, acetate in here that gives off this like cooling effect and it's a uh, it's like a menthol cooling kind of thing almost comes across like peppermint and uh, it's very potent very very potent when i first sprayed it on i was like that's a lot of menthol so but i don't think the notes imply that there's mint in anyway so this is really good it's a Beast mode, Creed Aventus kind of style. If you're interested at all in this one, I would say that this one is definitely well worth it if you're interested in like Creed Aventus, that kind of thing. But like I said in a lot of my videos is there's so many Creed Aventus clones out there that um, you gotta kind of like pick and choose. I think this one is well worth it though um, because you're getting like power and longevity. Like this stuff is no joke. Um, but yeah, I, I like the intense version. Uh, this is black intense, no nitro intense. Uh, this is good. It, it's really good. I would say definitely well worth it. All right, let's talk about the star of the show, Red. Uh, this one had me kind of taken back when I first sprayed it on. Now, this was the first one I decided to wear because it's such a heavy hype beast. I was just like ready to rock this. So many people have asked me if I tried it or if I was planning on trying it. And when it finally came in, I was like, I have to, I have to wear this one first. So I love hate this stuff. Let me explain. This stuff is so magnificent. When I first sprayed it on, I, I smelled this like watermelon Jolly Rancher kind of smell. It's got the same kind of thing Hawass Ice has. Hawass, Hawass Ice, that kind of thing. But it has this watermelon, cologne, strawberry kind of accords in here. There's a strawberry like ketone, I think it's called, but it's a strawberry watermelon kind of accord in here that's giving this like watermelon Jolly Rancher kind of feel to it. It is very sweet. It's like if you spray on a Jolly Rancher onto your skin, it's that sweet. Now it does dry down to a nice aquatic, fresh, musky kind of smell. It lasts for a long time. If you are interested at all in longevity and that's a main selling point for you, this one is definitely a high regarded fragrance in my eyes because th this thing lasts forever. I sprayed it on and I was smelling it into the evening. So the longevity is great on this is what I'm trying to say. It's got that watermelon sweetness. It dries down into this like clean musky kind of style. There's a few different fragrances that this really reminds me of. One specifically, it's, you know, Hawass Ice. The other one, I tried a fragrance out from Chris, the CEO, or Christopher Lee Fragrances. He had one of his fragrances. I forget exactly which one it was, but that one had the same kind of sweetness that this one has and the same kind of musky kind of tone to this one. But also, you know, it's Invictus Aqua. It's Invictus. It's that, you know, fresh, uh, ozonic bubblegum kind of sweetness. I think they did an excellent job introducing that watermelon strawberry accord in here because it gives this like such fruity sweetness in the top. Honestly, it, it feels and it smells like if you just took Hawass, replaced the plum and put this strawberry watermelon kind of accord in here. This stuff is excellent. I, I can't stress how amazing this stuff is. Um, the big downside with me though, is this one is sickingly sweet. Um, this one is a fragrance that I have to wear on my day off because if I'm wearing this to work and stuff, people are gonna, it's a, it's a beast mode, you know, it's gonna be projecting on off and hitting people's nostrils. So if I'm gonna wear this one to work or anything, I'd have to spray like two or three sprays, something really light, you know, just to get that kind of feel. You know, and that's a good downside, I guess, to have because I, I wear YSL Y Eau de Parfum to work and I only spray like two sprays under my shirt. So, you know, I can wear it. It's just, it's really loud. It's really obnoxious. It's sweet though. This one is definitely sweet and um, very, very good. Definitely well worth it, this one. I'm glad to have it in my collection, really am. All right, that will do it for this video. Next video, I'm gonna do platinum, green, and number blue. Number blue, that's a real thing, Nate. So if you wanna watch that video next, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It'll probably be out either tomorrow or the next day. And then I'm gonna do a whole video where I rank all of them, and I'm gonna do a big giveaway for that too. Thank you so much for watching the video, everyone. We'll see you next time.